This is the Makava Mark III-D, an Israeli main battle tank that has been added to War Thunder as a prize vehicle for the strategist crafting event. The vehicle is placed at Tier 7 BR-10.3 in the American line and joins the Makava Mark I and Mark IIb that were also added to the game as event prizes. However, this newer version does feature a more powerful engine, improved armor, and a 120mm cannon to replace the previously used 105mm Shurir cannon. So firstly starting off with that new main gun, this is a 120mm MG251 cannon with the availability to use HETFS, HETF and APFSDS, the first two of which are stock rounds for this vehicle. The APFSDS round is a tier 3 modification and has up to 625mm of penetration with a muzzle velocity of 1704m per second. Currently this is the highest penning tank round in War Thunder, so won't have too many issues facing even the most armoured MBTs on the battlefield. In addition to the main cannon, the Makava features two turret top mounted 7.62mm machine guns, another one in a coaxial mount, and a 12.7mm machine gun mounted above the main cannon. The gunner's sight for the vehicle has thermals and can zoom between 6x and 12 times, so shouldn't have any issues picking up enemy vehicles at long or short ranges. The Mark III-D features improved armor. This improvement is mainly situated around the turret of the vehicle, which is visibly larger than previous versions of the Makava. The large composite armor sections on the sides and front of the turret help to improve protection mainly against chemical rounds. These composite sections add to the protection already provided by the turret's cast homogenous armor. The hull of the vehicle features relatively weak base armor, although has received some additional composite armor segments to the sides of the crew compartment to further improve protection. The surface of the vehicle then features a variety of composite screen segments to further improve the protection of vital components. Another change from the previous versions of the Makava is the addition of fireproof containers for the ammunition load. This will ideally minimize the risk of the ammunition being set off by a fire in the vehicle. The Mark III-D also features an upgraded power unit with an engine that produces 1,200 horsepower compared to the 960 horsepower of the Mark IIb. So despite a fair increase in weight, the Mark III-D does have improved mobility. Being mounted in the front of the vehicle, this engine does often end up being used as extra armor and is actually quite good at stopping even some of the more effective rounds the vehicle might face. And while your engine being knocked out might not be ideal, the first shot from an enemy being stopped can give you enough time to retaliate. Some additional things of note, the vehicle does have a laser warning system so you will be promptly notified of any laser rangefinders or designators being used near your vehicle. Additionally, the Mark III-D features 42 smoke grenades, 12 of which are in smoke grenade launchers and the other 30 of which are in a mortar inside the turret. The vehicle has access to 4 camouflage options, of which I personally prefer to use the tricolor scheme. So with that all said, let's now go over and move into some gameplay in ground RB. So our first game is on Port Novo, we have a triple capture point layout and currently my team has the A point, the enemy has the C point and we're obviously attempting to push forward so we can get the B point and start draining the enemy's tickets. Moving forward using the thermal sight to scan around, very quickly spot uh, a T-64B, just put around through the frontal plate, um, you know, the, the, the M322 APFSDS round has enough pen, uh, 625 mil, to go through the front of a lot of these tanks. TATB uh, just sort of driving past, shot into the side, knocks out the crew, set off the ammunition. Uh, and then we have another TATB here who is uh, firing at teammates. I don't think he knows I'm here, and really I'm just lying in wait for him to drive out in front of me so I can put a shot into his crew compartment, as he does, and as I do, getting a third kill for this game on another T-80B. So turning around, I saw some shots coming from behind me, not really sure where from, and I would prefer not to get shot in the back, so I turn around now that the threat on the other side's been dealt with, so that I can face this way and try and get an idea of what's going on, and Sync is being marked, and all I see is some bushes, what's going on? Leopard 2A4 gets here, I'm stuck wondering what is going on, and while I'm looking, I then see there, there's a bush, and the bush starts to move. What is it? What could it be? Well, it's a cute little ASU-57. I would assume he's trying to get god mode or something along those lines. So I pull out, and of course, he has no armor, so I can kind of just shower him with machine gun fire, and that will ideally knock out the crew. I quickly spot a T-72B, 
just yeet a shot towards him, get the kill, and then finish off the ASU with my machine guns. A little later, we've pushed up quite a bit further. Uh, me and an automatic are facing down an enemy tank. Uh, the automatic's hitting him. I set him on fire. The automatic knocks out his tracks so he can't move. And uh, then I just wait for the reload, move forward, and lower frontal plate. And that is uh, yet another kill in this game. You will have noticed though the automatic did just get blown up by a MiG-21. Uh, two tiny Ivans came in, my tracks got completely obliterated. Not to worry though, uh, the enemy did not push me until I had repaired my tracks, which was very polite of them. And once I had repaired, um, this T-64B decided to push and yeah, he shot me, didn't really do anything, I shot him. Well, kaboom. So, yeah, another kill. And a little bit later, you know, we went and captured the C point, and uh, after that, it was the end of the game. Seven kills and a capture point, second in the team. Pretty good demonstration of this vehicle as far as pushing towards the enemy goes. Second game is on Frozen Pass and is, of course, a night game, so the gunner's thermal sight is going to come in handy during this match. So, moving on, we're going to go for the A point, the uh, Tunnel of Death, as I call it. Uh, first off, looking down towards the other side of the map, I spot a thermal signature through the trees, and it's a T-72. So, you know, I was able to use the thermal sight to see roughly where he was, just threw a little shot, hoping that it would hit, and it, you know, perfectly went into the crew compartment and got that kill. Then I see an enemy uh, T-80, uh, fairly simple shot there, didn't even spot him with the thermals, I just saw him moving down the hill, jumped into the site, put a shot into the crew compartment, two pretty quick kills there from a pretty decent overlook position. Enemy T-72 was then pushing up into the tunnel, we have a Leclerc on the capture point, I'm a little bit further back uh, with a damaged engine, but, uh, you know, I'm fairly quickly get the engine repaired, luckily don't get killed while I'm immobilized, but I get the engine fixed, move forward, quickly uh, dispatch of another T-72, and then continue to move forward. As I'm moving forward, I'm trying to look around to see if there's any more enemy tanks near the exit of the tunnel, and, you know, he, uh, an enemy tank fires, basically says, hey, here I am, it's a T-80U, lower frontal plate, just before he can get a shot off, and that is another kill. And as you can see, you know, the reload's I would say fairly average for an MBT, but this thing can actually do quite well in uh, essentially standoff situations. So uh, I, I did enjoy playing it in this game, being uh, basically surrounded by enemy tanks at one end of the tunnel. Moving on, I tried to kill an SPAA uh, by hitting his radar, or at least do some damage, although the round just completely misses seemingly. But then I see ATGM vehicle. I really don't want to get blown up by an ATGM, so I very quickly yeet a shot across to finish that off. A short while later, I am still at the A point. I'm at this point the last friendly defending this point, and I get rushed by a T-80B. And, you know, again demonstrating how the engine can actually come in handy as an extra piece of armor. His shot just got completely eaten by the engine, whereas my shot very easily went through the front of his tank and killed him. A little later, T-80U. Uh, I had damaged him quite a bit, but then a KA-50 swooped in, and with his 30mm cannon, he knocked out my tracks, knocked out my gun, so I'm just completely uh, completely defenseless, and get very easily picked off, as at that point, there wasn't really anything I could have done. Overall, though, a reasonable demonstration of the vehicle in more of a point defense type playstyle. Nonetheless, though, there we go, the Macava Mark 3D. As far as how it plays, I would say it is certainly similar to the earlier Macavas, despite the fair increase in BR, although I would say that it feels a bit more survivable. In many games, I was actually able to take quite a few hits and continue pushing. The armor and mobility are certainly not on par with most other vehicles at this BR, although the gun does help to level the playing field, as once the APFSDS round has been acquired, the vehicle becomes more than competitive enough to fight most top MBTs, at least in my opinion. Overall, I had a pretty fun time driving this vehicle out, and now I am actually trying to grind the event to get either this or the BI permanently. I've played them both on test drive, and I did enjoy both of them, so I am hoping to pick up at least one of them by the time the event ends. Anyways, that's going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you did enjoy, please consider dropping a like, and if you wish to see more content such as this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.